Hey folks, <coughs> doing? This is Brian. Hey, we played um, an RQG game uh, tonight, and we cut a little early uh, this week as well. So I figured I'd go ahead and put this all together since it's on top of my head. Um, and if you want to follow along with the live play, it's in the description. However, I found out uh, towards the end of the evening that it was no longer recording audio. I um, just so went back and double checked it, and some, for some reason, at 18 minutes, like 43, 44 seconds, mid sentence, sound just cuts off. No idea what caused that to happen. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, successful night. Um, we started off with that spirit combat, which I was really concerned about because the spirit that they were fighting was, in fact, very powerful. I didn't. Uh, appreciate initially how powerful it was when I did all this conversion stuff, you know, months ago. Um, but uh, they had unleashed both of the spirits on it, and then uh, they engaged to try and damage it with magic weapons as well. Um, I had because this particular spirit, when you do a power versus power. In spirit combat, normally what you do is you decrease the opponent's magic points. Uh, sometimes it's hit points, but this particular spirit actually decreases intelligence. And I debated back and forth about whether or not I was going to give these cult spirits actual intelligence or not. And I decided, no, they're not, they're not, you know, allied spirits, they're just cult spirits. And so I did not give them intelligence. And so I kind of had thinking in my head that the spirit, because I already said that as soon as the spirits come across it engaged, that it would attack the spirits. And after the first round, it realized these guys don't have intelligence. And then turn and attack um, Otto, who was the one who released them. But as we got combat going and running, completely forgot all about that. And so I just did normal spirit combat <laughs> between the spirits. And um, with uh, the, um, the death cult spirit having missed once, and the other, the Orlanthe cult spirits having critted once and special once, in addition to a couple of ties, um, they managed in two rounds to do 30 points. Of damage to the the death cult spirit and it did like well they had a circle protection up with two points of spirit screen so only damaged one of them once so it was wickedy whack they took him down um, which you know is good for them um, I was just kind of surprised I was expecting this thing uh, to either take one of the spirits down hard um, or if I would have played it right, it would have attacked one of the party members and, and done some really damage um, to them. Uh, but they took the spirit out. They knocked down the uh, the statue, which I did. I started to started to consider it should have been a whiter the uh, statue. Um, but the priest is outside of the range of the whiter. I was going to have somebody roll, you know, the lowest power person roll luck to see if. Because there was some other stuff going on where the priest, the high priest, would have been notified about what's been going on in the temple and may have been within range, um, you know, trying to figure out what's going on uh, with what's happening here. In which case, if he was in the range, then the, the lighter then cast the priest's spells, uh, which were significant. But. Uh, I forgot about doing that, and so you know, it was outside the range, and so the white didn't really have any defenses itself. Um, and it wasn't really that tough, um, and so they knocked down the the wood totem and chopped it up, killed the wire. Um, then they went back around. They had, there was some discussion on, okay, what do we do next? Do we go down the stairs? Do we um, go back to the round room and go down? that tube, 
or do we go back to where the uh, altar was and go down that hallway, which is what they end up doing, going down there. There is a trap door in part of the, um, the uh, bridge area there because the altar itself is in a overhang, and then there's a bridge to the rest of the, the temple area on that side. Um, and there's a trap door there, so I was going back and forth in my head about how to convert this kind of stuff. So I just said, okay, who's in front? There's two of them in front. They go along. Uh, how to make uh, dex saving throws. Made it easy. Dex times five. Um, I'll first roll to see if the trap actually triggered and it did. The trap triggered on the first one. So they step on it. It triggers. They both made their saves. Um, so they all went around it. And they go further down. Listen to the door. Nothing there. Listen to the other door. Nothing there. Um, open it up. Somebody made a critical listen roll, um, but there wasn't anything to hear, but it's kind of a dry, musty smell uh, coming from up, up from there. Uh, so they go back. Oh, they did go and investigate in front of the round room to the right. They never went was a door, uh, which is where the, the barracks were. There's you know pallets there, a fire pit, um, a chimney slew kind of thing, and a couple of private cells. Um, they found some writing materials um, and some clothes. You know, there's nothing, nothing there. Um, let me go back around the other hallway. Musty smell. Other room. They open it up. Uh, it's a square room, like six meters by six meters, something like that. A couple of chests. Uh, four of these dark lights, though they're cold. Uh, they're not lit. Um, and another doorway on the other side. So there's some maneuvering around. A couple of guys watch back there. What's going on? A couple of guys make uh, light up some torches. They go to the other door, listen, don't hear anything. Um, but again, uh, it was a restra made uh, a special or a critical listen roll. Again, there's nothing to hear, but the smell of death is on their side of the store. That that stench, right? And she's a uh, beast of course, so she knows what death smells like. So she kind of makes this you know, death room kind of motion to everybody, you know, under the door. So there's some maneuvering around the, the heavies. I'll get around the door. They open it up. They go in. It's a hallway for a little bit of a ways. And then to the south, it opens up. Um, and there's a, la a lever on uh, the west west wall. It opens into a cavern. Um, and there's a portcullis. But they never really investigated what was on their side of this portcullis was going over. But something on their side is dead. Uh, they can smell that. They don't really run around the corner. They just kind of got to that edge and stayed there. So never checked out that cavern if I was in there. They go back inside. They're going to open up the chests. Um, Otto takes a, a spike and a hammer and whack. Pops open one lock. Goes the other one. Whack. Pops open the other lock. Um, and then they decide to do like count of three kind of thing. And Lars opens up one. And uh, Angular opens up the other one. Uh, they both have magical traps on them. Um, Lars misses his saving throw, so he's hit with a spell that decreases his strength. Um, but it's also uh, trapped with poison sleeping gas, and he misses constitution saving throw, so he flops unconscious on the ground. Ingar made his save, and there's another trap on the other one. Uh, so they kind of discuss, you know, there's some stuff in there. Uh, small bag, small leather bag, uh, something wrapped up in material, something bulky wrapped up in material, a brass box, a small gold box. Uh, I think that was it. Mm, so they start deciding, okay, what are we going to do with Lars unconscious? And they start thinking about, well, last time we had somebody unconscious, it was, you know, like half an hour before they woke up. And then I, I brought up the fact that that was due to darkness elementals. This is not a darkness elemental. They do try to treat uh, poison on him, um, but nobody was, was successful. That would have decreased the time that Lars was unconscious, though, which would have been handy. Um, so they're trying to figure out, okay, how do we... I mean, he's size 16, plus he's got all his gear. Um, the chest they have with stuff in it, they could, you know, maybe throw in his van braces and his greaves in there. I think it's big enough for that. Put his helm in, maybe, because, you know, it's got enough depth to do that. Um, and then Otto's pretty strong. He could, you know, fireman carry and then, you know, spread load, you know, his weapons and stuff as necessary amongst everybody else. 
But this kind of discussion went on for quite a while. There was a number of discussions all throughout the evening at different different points. It took some time. Um, there's some, some dead air time with me reading and checking up on stuff just to double check things. Um, they say, okay, we're going to distribute his stuff and we're going to hump him out of here. Um, if he wakes up before we get to camp, then we'll you know, decide to come back at that point. Um, otherwise, we'll go to camp and wait until he wakes up. Until he wakes up. Um, and then, uh, you know, metagame, one player says, well, because at that point, we're pushing after 11.30. Um, if there was going to be some kind of an encounter, that would probably be a good time to stop. If not, then you know, go back to camp or whatever. Get, you know, we could talk through the whole large thing and then continue on. So we still have time. Um, but the process of humping Lars out is going to take some time. So I rolled, and sure enough, there's a random encounter. And um, so I check and see what that is. It's not going to be much of an encounter. Um, but you never know, right? So we went ahead, closed up. Uh, we killed a lot of time up front with some discussion, uh, you know, just people talking. And uh, some concern about one of my players, who works for the government, um, about uh, these live plays being, you know, on the web kind of deal. Uh, but I specifically address everybody by player name and, you know, the little icons of people. Isn't that great? So you'd have to really know who you're looking at. Plus, you have to be one of my followers, you know, looking at my videos and actually be interested in the live plays further on in the, into the campaign as well. So um, he was a little iffy at first, but then yeah, he realized that it should not be an issue for him. Um, but uh, all in all, that was about it. They've got some treasure. Um, there were a couple of comments about, hey, are we done now? I'm going to clear down the temple, and I'm going, well, they know there's the stairs going down on the far side with the port columns. They know there's whatever is on their side of this cavern on this port columns. There's whatever behind the doors right down the hallway here. Um, and then there's the trap door, and then there's the, uh, the I don't call it a tunnel, but the, uh, the shaft. There we go. The shaft in the circular room that continue on to other things. Now, these other things are not necessarily part of the temple, except what may be behind Port Cullis here, although maybe not, since they didn't even check it out. And definitely what's behind that, that other door. That's still part of the, the temple proper here. So they go back saying, you know, yeah, we cleaned it all out. We're good to go. I'll make some rolls on a, on a, on a significant debriefing. I say, hey, what about behind that door? There could be another piece of the temple behind that door. You didn't check it out, but you know, we'll see. And we'll see. Happy gaming.